Belgium has the reputation of being the dullest country in the world. Inhabited only by friendly people who eat mussels with French fries and mayonnaise and produce Swiss chocolate. To cut a long story short, which is necessary if you really want to understand why the formerly fourth greatest power in the world is now close to being cut in really very small shitty pieces, Belgium is definitely, totally, completely boring. Boring? Belgium? Actually, we found some evidence that this is nothing but an unfair prejudice. Belgium is actually one of the strangest countries in the world. To begin with, they have the only monument that is 20 centimeters high and pisses in front of you. They have the only Prime Minister who, when asked to sing the national anthem, mistakenly sings the French one. They have the only landmark building that's made exclusively of, uh, balls. For over 150 years, Belgium has produced the best experts in engineering the most inefficient political structure. Belgium excels at making everything as complicated as possible in their three national languages, Dutch, French and German. They have one central government. Then, they have three regions, each with a government that has as much power as the central government. This is a very good way to make running the country totally impossible. Fortunately, only the region of Brussels in the centre is bilingual in French and Dutch. The Flemish region is monolingual in Dutch. Although there are administrative services for the French speaking here, here, and here, and also here, and oh yes, here. And French speaking citizens can be judged in French in the so called BHV county, where a strong minority speak French. Wallonia is also a pure French speaking territory. Well, except here, and here, and also here, where the German speaking minority lives. So, to deal with these numerous minorities, the Belgian Witloof technologists decided that three regions were not sufficient and added three additional structures called the communities. There are three communities, Dutch, French and German. Like the central state and like the regions, each community has a government and a parliament. And, for instance, the French community supply cultural and social services to the French-speaking people in Wallonia and in Brussels. But they may not supply any services to the 300,000 French-speaking fellows in Flanders because Flanders is monolingual and foreign speakers must speak Dutch. Godverdom! The German community can only act in Wallonia, the French-speaking region, while the Dutch community acts in the Brussels region or in Flanders. So you see, a French-speaking family in Brussels could depend on the central government for granddaddy's pensions, on the French community government for the music academy, the Dutch community government for the children's school, the Brussels government for the garbage recycling, and so on. So, as a whole, you can have ministers of four different governments working for one Brussels family. Now you'll understand why Belgians can't live together and they can't live apart. The Belgian people are definitely a marvel of the glue technocracy, designed to make all simple things catastrophically complicated. And it works, which means that it doesn't work at all. Well, to be honest, one thing unites the different communities of this strange little naughty country. They all agree that their national dish is called French fries in English. French fries with mayonnaise. Fritten met mayonnaise. Frit à la mayonnaise. Fritten met mayonnaise. Oh, I forgot. Mr. Van Kauenberg is a French politician and Mr. Bourgeois is a Dutch politician.